Welcome back to the Departure Reef guys. We are fresh off a 25 day trip to Rajasthan and now we're going to share with you all the information you need to know to plan your own trip. We'll be covering where we went, what we did, how we got there and how much we think you need to budget for it. Let's dive in. Okay, let's start with the fun stuff. Let's cover off each place we went in Rajasthan, our highlights and suggested time frames. Be afraid to use this advice, this information to make your own itinerary. Also, side note, we have activated the chapters function at the bottom of your screen today. So feel free to skip forward and back depending on what you need. Considering its close proximity to Delhi and Agra, most people will start their Rajasthan adventure in Jaipur. We were no different. Jaipur is famous for its pink city, which is the main hub for tourism, culture and history. If you can find accommodation to suit your needs, this is the place to be or as close to the pink city as possible. We felt that three to four days full of exploring was perfect for Jaipur. In this time, you can explore the pink city, its vibrant markets, the iconic Hawa Mahal and the palace. You could also explore the hill regions outside the pink city, including Amber Fort, Amber Palace, the famous Stepwell and of course, Nahagar Fort. The next stop is the small but significant pilgrimage town Pushkar. This place is the ultimate pilgrimage site for Hindu devotees but still has a bit to offer non-Hindu tourists as well. The town is centered around a holy lake with a long bazaar that pretty much goes completely along one side of the lake. Here you'll find great shopping particularly for clothes and leather products. You'll also find great food and a hipster-like coffee scene. People generally come to Pushkar either on a pilgrimage to soak up its chill atmosphere or just to have a look. You'll struggle to find alcohol or meat here because of its religious significance, but you'll find plenty of opportunity to embrace Rajasthan's spiritual side. As for the length of stay, if you're on a schedule, two full days is great, but if you want to tap into your chill side, go with an open itinerary and see how you feel. There are some amazing sunset hikes as well. Be sure to check out Savitri Mata and Gayatri Mata temples. Heading further east, we make our way to Jai Selma. Here is where you'll experience proper Rajasthani desert, 30 kilometers from the Pakistan border. We had never heard of Jai Selma until we got to India, but it ended up being one of our favorite destinations. The city centers around the Jai Selma fort, a really large active fortress atop a hill that houses approximately 4,000 people. When you're planning your trip, we recommend finding accommodation as close to the fort as you can. As for time and itinerary, there are two main activities to do in Jai Selma. Explore the fortress and the surrounding neighborhoods, which is best done over one to two days coupled with an overnight camel safari for one or two nights. If you are a solo traveler, you can look at joining a group safari, or if you're traveling with people, you can search around for a more private experience. The cost doesn't really differentiate too much between private or group tours. The second last stop on our Rajasthan itinerary is Jodhpur, home to the Mahaga Fort and the famous Blue City. We made an entire video about the things to do in Jodhpur. We can comfortably say it was our favorite place in Rajasthan. We found that it was very diverse in what you can see and do. Obviously, it has the impressive Mahaga Fort, but it also has an abundance of blue streets you can explore, which are back alley labyrinth style. On top of that, it has a relaxed feel. There is heaps of good cafes and rooftop restaurants, a magical step well, and a heap of unique places to explore around town. We recommend three to four days to fully cover the city at an easy going pace. A few of our job per highlights included MH Guesthouse where we stayed, very homey, very comfortable. Sam's Art House Cafe had the best coffee, Indigo was our favorite restaurant, and the Rock Park was our hidden gem. Udaipur was our final stop in Rajasthan and one we recommend if you have time on your side. It definitely felt a lot less Rajasthani than the rest as it is a city of lakes and did not have a fortress. It did have a great food scene, cultural buildings and good shopping. If this sounds like you, one or two days to explore the city is plenty. Be sure to check out the cultural dance show on every day at sundown. So how much did our trip to Rajasthan really cost? As I said, we spent 25 days in Rajasthan. Now, we could have definitely done that a bit quicker, but we had to schedule a few rest days and days for making content for you legends. All prices you're about to hear are in Australian dollars and are per person. We ate two to three meals in restaurants every day, 
and always spent the night in private rooms. Now, let's jump in. Let's start with transport. We both spent $108 each on transport and this included all trains and buses and tuk-tuks. So all intertown trains cost between $10 and $20 each and we always opted for the third AC class in the sleeper carriages. So the buses, they were usually between $5 and $10 each and we always opted for the sleeper cabins. Now, you could have definitely done it cheaper if you just got normal seating, um, but we wanted a bit of luxury and it was a good time for us to work on the computers. Tuk-tuk wise, Jaipur definitely cost us the most when it comes to tuk-tuks because we had to get around the city and it's quite big. Apart from that, our location where we stayed was usually very central and very well located for walking. So tuk-tuks were only really a big expense in Jaipur. No thank you, no thank you, no thank you. No, 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 possible. I said no thank you. God, stop following us. Activities. We spent $87 each, averaging $3 a day, which is quite surprising when you actually think about it. But a lot of the good things were free. Now, most of that $87 went to the Desert Safari, which was $62 each. So really, we spent next to nothing on activities. Okay. <laughs> I was not holding tight, Geta. In Rajasthan, a lot of the temples and a lot of the palaces cost about four to 600 rupees, sometimes even more to enter. Now, we didn't enter too many of them. The ones we did, we really enjoyed. And the ones we didn't, you could at least see the outside of the building or walk up the entrance to get a gist of it. And yeah, we don't feel like we missed out on too much. And as for our miscellaneous costs, we both spent about $43 each on things like laundry, ATM fees, mosquito repellent, sunscreen, all that crap that you have to buy that just adds up in the background. Accommodation, the big one. This was $324 each, and we averaged $12 each per night. As I said, always a guest house or a private room. We've been pretty much everywhere in India at this point, and we could say that the value for money in accommodation was really good in Rajasthan. Each room came with a big spacious room, a really nice bed, some really cool decor, a desk, a TV, sometimes working, sometimes not, and a great private bathroom. We were very happy with the accommodation in Rajasthan. Food and beverage cost us $415 each for the month, averaging $16 per day. Now, as I said, we usually had between two and three meals in a restaurant, but two ways we could have budgeted better for our food and bev was opted for hotels or guest houses, which had breakfast included for $3 per night. That would have saved us heaps in the morning, I reckon. And the other thing, it's probably a bit of a cultural thing. In Australia, whenever we eat out, we would look at the menu and be like, okay, each person gets one main and maybe an entree to share it with the table. But here, the mains are big enough to share between two. So we definitely over ordered for most of our time in Rajasthan by accident. Luckily though, the food was damn delicious and we didn't have much wastage. But definitely if we had a shared, we would have got that cost right down and if we were a bit more game on the street food, but. It just tastes like pizza. Right. I'll give you an honest review. How yeah, does it taste? Tastes way better than the last thing. It's like potatoes stuffed in bread with like onion, maybe some coriander, and a little bit of spice. Now, the question you've all been waiting for, how much did our 25 days in Rajasthan actually cost us? 979 Australian dollars each, averaging 39 Australian dollars per day. Now, we definitely didn't do this on a shoestring budget. I'd say somewhere between mid-range and shoestrings somewhere in there. Definitely nowhere near luxury. This price doesn't include flights to and from and it doesn't include visas. So yes, we had a great time in Rajasthan. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions about travel in Rajasthan or India or just the world in general, feel free to drop a comment or message us on Instagram. Till next time, have a great day.